we are as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret society, opposed to secret oaths, opposed to secret proceedings, secret for secret proceedings. No official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, could interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to, to, deserve to know. To, 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 to deserve to know. Welcome to Conspiracy Corner Podcast, everyone. This is Abe, your host. It is August 4th, 2024. I am off today. It's a hot, muggy day. Pretty much all I did was uh, got up this morning. Well, afternoon, because you all know I work third shift. Um, went out, went to Lowe's, got a bow saw. Uh, sawed up some trees and trimmed up some branches and all that type of stuff because uh, we had some bad storms blow through Kentucky here recently and uh, wanted to do some cosmetic work on the lawn and shit. Um, yeah, that's about it for an update. Just chill day, played some cards with the missus, took a bath, did some shaving, you know, all that jazz. Um, how's y'all's day? Let me know in the comments. So we're going to get into a little rabbit hole. Okay. We're covering Leave the World Behind, obviously. But they have taken a lot out. Well, no, I rephrased that wrong. Um, Obama has added a lot into the movie that's on Netflix that is not in the book. So... The son of Clay and Amanda gets bit by a tick. And everyone in the conspiracy community is talking about Lyme disease. His teeth start falling out. But they're also getting hit with like noise attacks or radioactive attacks. Um, so we're going to go down a rabbit hole, which other podcasts have done, of Lyme disease. Where did it come from? What's the origin? That's today basically what the main concept of the episode is, besides actual, like, chapters and stuff from the book. So, let's get into that. Weaponized ticks is Lyme disease and escaped government bioweapon. Lyme disease is now a fairly common ailment, plaguing more than 300,000 people each year. And most people believe it to be an extremely unfortunate side effect of living in or near heavily wooded areas. Although ticks are found all over the world, some are questioning why 95% of all confirmed Lyme disease cases are occurring in the United States. Hmm, interesting. Investigators are looking into the possibility that the ticks blamed for spreading the disease may actually be carrying bioweapons that were never meant to escape from an island off the coast of New York. So let's see, off of New York Island, Montauk, you know, that was going on there, which the whole Stranger Things is based off of. I did a whole episode on a Stranger Things review of how it's based off of Montauk Project and wouldn't be the first time the U.S. government did some weird shady shit. What is Lyme disease? According to the CDC, Lyme disease is a bacteria-related illness that humans can contract when bitten by infected black-legged ticks. Exodus Scapulus, 
sorry. Um, if you didn't notice, I can't speak Latin. Usually in New England, the northwest coastline, in the mid-Atlantic, and north, northern Miss Western states. For the disease to actually take hold in a person, the infected tick must be attached to him for 36 to 48 hours. Usually adult ticks can be spotted and removed before they have a chance to spread the disease. It's the young ticks, or the nymphs, that are generally smaller, in particular, and difficult to spot, and therefore more dangerous. So, right there, there's that country song that says, I'd like to check you for ticks. Yeah, you probably should, honestly. Me and my wife, we used to check ourselves and our daughter. Like, common sense. Check for ticks, dude. If you're going hiking and your wife doesn't check check you for ticks, then she doesn't love you. And if you're not checking her for ticks, then you don't love her. Um, common sense. But uh, nymphs, isn't that interesting? Nymphs. Um, that is a Greek mythological fae folk creature. Maybe we'll do a deep dive on what nymphs are. I just found it interesting that they used that term. An infected person will usually suffer early on from a skin rash, fatigue, flu-like symptoms, chills, fever, headache, muscle and joint pain, and swollen lymph nodes. Fortunately, the skin rash, which appears in the shape of a target with a bullseye, is fairly unique to Lyme disease. Interesting. And can serve as a flag for physicians who are trained to spot it and who can then treat it properly before it gets out of control and begins to cause much more severe damage to the joints, nervous system, heart, and cognitive function. Plum Island, the source of a Lyme disease bioweapon? Off the coast of Long Island, New York, is Plum Island, home to a scientific research facility that studies animal-borne diseases. It was originally used as a Spanish-American War military base, before it was converted into a what became a curiously secret institution in 1954. While the United States government claims the building was converted into a center to study foot-and-mouth disease in cattle, Many believe it actually was installed as a laboratory use to facilitate anti-Soviet operations at the start of the Cold War. Theory goes like this, as things were heating up with the Soviet Union following World War II and U.S. government began recruiting Nazi scientists to help them lead a clever battle against the spread of communism using biological weaponry. The Nazis were known for extensive experiments involving the weaponization of virus and disease, chemical warfare and, stu and such, virological Viro warfare, particularly under the leadership of the nefarious Nazi scientist Kurt Blom, who experimented with the use of mosquitoes, GMO mosquitoes, we got into that in a previous episode. Please go check that out. It's called GMO Mosquitoes. They're experimenting down in Florida right now. And Hawaii. Who experimented with the use of mosquitoes and other insects as vectors for spreading the plague, malaria, and other pathogens. The recruitment project was known as Operation Paperclip and was responsible for importing prize German scientists and technicians from Europe and putting them to work on Plum Island. Of the scientist was Erich Traub, who studied under Blum and specialized in vaccine and virus research as well as disease-carrying insects, in particular the common tick. Which, by the way, we are going to do a deep dive into Project Paperclip. I haven't gotten to it yet. It's just so dense. I only have so much time in the day. Still hope you enjoy. 
Entomological warfare testing including Operation Big Itch, Operation Big Buzz, Operation Dropkick, and Operation Mayday, which Mayday is Illuminati um, elite holiday, May 1st. All tested the viability of using mosquitoes and fleas to disseminate mosquitoes like yellow fever across enemy territories. If any insect was destined to become a biological weapon, the tick was near the top of the list. Ticks latch tightly onto living specimens and can be transported long distances, with the capability of infecting all animals they came into contact with, including human beings. Plus, they are small. And when they lay eggs, they lay thousands at once. The idea was to set thousands of ticks loose on the Soviet Union, where they would destroy the livestock, and thus a large amount of the food supply, starve them from the inside. In the end, however, the Pentagon decided not to damage the food supply. They didn't want to become responsible for feeding millions of Soviets when they had won the war, and they called off the weaponized insects. But like so many science experiments, something may have gone terribly wrong. Exterminating all the ticks on Plum Island proved to be futile, especially when birds regularly, regularly flew from the mainland to the island and back. Perhaps not so coincidentally, in 1975, the first outbreak of Lyme occurred a few miles away in Lyme, Connecticut. Which, by the way, there is protection laws against harming birds. There was a guy, I kid you not, who recently got arrested in New Jersey for ripping the head off of a seagull that stole his daughter's french fries. I kid you not, this is a true story, go look it up. I heard it on the last podcast on the left. Crazy shit, so migrating birds, there's laws protecting them. Um, which I'm fine with, it's just... Yeah, that, hence why they don't want to fuck up the food chain and shit. They're under protective order. <clears throat> the latest resurgence in the theory comes from the book Bitten, A Secret History of Lyme Disease and Biological Weapons, written by Chris Newby, a Stanford University-based science writer. Which Stanford in general is such a strange town. There's a lot that goes on in Stanford as far as like the Stanford Prison Experiments, which I'm sure I mentioned many times on this channel. Um, Maury is filmed there. Pretty sure fucking Jerry Springer used to be filmed there. There's a lot of weird shit in Stanford, Connecticut, man. Um, university, let's see. Under our skin, which examined the debilitating effects of Lyme disease and the lack of resources spent studying or even acknowledging it by medical professionals. The argument against playing devil's advocate. Because the numbers of people infected with Lyme disease have increased in recent years, many people have once again been looking askance at Plum Island and the rumors that surround it. Just a few weeks ago, a House congressman led an effort to pass an amendment demanding the Pentagon investigate whether this horrific origin story is true. While the Inspector General's report has yet to be released, some scientists and mainstream publications have attempted to lay the matter to rest. An article published by Tufts University quotes Cummings School Professor Sam Telford, a leading expert on mosquito and tick-borne infections. Quote, this conspiracy theory was soundly debunked by research that David Persing and I did in the early 1990s, he says. The article goes on to say, quote, It turned out that the bacterium was circulating in wildlife long before Lyme disease became a known illness in humans. Ticks collected in 1945 from the eastern end of Long Island and mice collected in 1894 on Cape Cod were found to be infected with B. Burgodorferi. This means that B. Burgodorferi already existed 
in wildlife on Long Island, neighbor to Plum Island, for nearly 10 years and on Cape Cod for 50 years before the time period in question. But while these scientists claim that Newby and others research into the government's role in spreading Lyme disease is nothing but fringe conspiracy, they ignore the numerous aforementioned instances that set precedent for those for its likelihood during the Vietnam and Cold War. And whether or not the Senate report confirms or rejects the theory of Lyme disease story of origination, the primary concern to the public is now how to fend off the disease via the ticks themselves. Experts recommend that people should safeguard their homes by cleaning up areas around it that may attract rodents, and to be vigilant as to any insects they may be bringing home after hiking, playing, camping, or working in or near the woods. So, last episode, we got into uh, the Friends um, rabbit hole, so you need to go check that shit out. Matthew Perry, Julie Roberts, Doja Cat. We covered Doja Cat, the Demons music video with the Friends references, but we never actually covered the actual lyrics of the song, so I wanted to do that as a quick little segment. <clears throat> so... Demons, song by Doja Cat. How my demons look, how them demons. Now that my pocket's full, how my demons look. Now that you bitches shook. <laughs> yeah, my demons look, now that my pocket's full. How my demons look. Yeah, now that bitches shook. I feel like, what's his name? Um, fucking Dave, what's his name? Ben Shapiro, that fucking Jewish wanker who didn't know that women's vaginas actually get wet when they're sexually aroused. And he says his wife is a doctor and he's like, wet ass pussy. And he was reading, you know, the wet ass pussy lyrics and he didn't realize that women's vaginas get wet when they're aroused. I guess no one taught him that in, uh, fucking synagogue i don't know it's funny but remember he was reading like wet ass pussy the lyrics <laughs> i'm not a jew i understand that women's pussies get wet i i promise i i did bring a child into this world i am an on, i am on to bigger things i just i just bought a limousine you live like me in your dreams i just quit the nicotine if you, th why is that? I just quit cigarettes. Okay. Wow. That's not even that gangster. Like, I don't know. I feel like a lyric, like I listen to like hardcore gangster rap, like fucking three, six mafia, Tyler, the creator, Eminem, old school, slim shady, fucking yellow wolf, struggle Jennings. Like I listen to a lot of rap. And I don't know, that's not a very gangster lyric right there. I just quit nicotine. Um, honey, there's shit out there like heroin, meth, crack. It would have sounded more gangster if you quit like a harder drug that you had to have actually detox from. Like, I just quit nicotine. Okay, so I just quit nicotine. If you throw in dick at me. Do it, nigga. <laughs> that shit should be at least do it, nigga. Nigga, I'ma bring the heat. I'ma bring the cold. Okay, that's a that's a sick line. I'ma bring the cold. You should bring your skis. Burr. Okay. I'm a fucking queen. I'm a expeditiously. See it, bitch. Are you off a key? You off a key? Well, I heard of key bumps. Like, is she referencing key bumps? Because, like, back in the day when people were doing cocaine and shit, we used to do key bumps or pills, you know. You call it a key bump. Basically, you'd put, you'd line up the pill on, on the ridge of the keys and shit, and you'd snort it off your keys, you know, your car keys, whatever. 
she talking? Is that a key bump reference or am I just too old? I used to be a druggie. You all know that. So, are you off a key? You off a key? I would never let you in my VIP. We are enemies. We are foes. We are you. And what are those? You are gross. Paracorset. Got you playing with your nose. Okay, so I'm guessing, yeah, 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 yeah. Got you playing with your nose because your nose gets itchy after you snort pharmaceuticals and shit. Okay, so she is talking about snorting shit. So that's that's kind of gangster. I can say that. You're, you're kind of gangster, Doja. How my demons look. How them demons. Now that my pocket's full. So, money. How my demons look, now that you bitches shook. Um, yeah, how my demons look, now my pocket's full. How my demons look, yeah, now that you bitches shook. She's not very lyrically very good. I'm just saying, like I have like I said, dude, I'm a fan of fucking rap and shit. And she's not honestly spitting that good of fucking rhymes. I'm a puppet. Wow, here we go. This is some Illuminati shit, and she's admitting it. I'm a puppet. I'm a sheep. I'm a puppet. I am a sheep. Okay. Now I like this. This is definitely some conspiracy rabbit hole shit. I'm a cash cow. I'm the fastest growing bitch on all your apps. Now you are tired of me because I'm on your ass. Now you are mad at me because I'm all they slap now. I can nap now. Lots of people that were sleeping say I rap now. Lots of people hopes and dreams are finally trashed now. Lots of people say they met me in the past now. So past life, regression, that type of shit. I done took the spotlight and made them black out. I done took the whole dick and blew my back out. Okay, so whorish shit. Scarlet whore. Um, occultism. I just swallowed all his kids and spit the class out. I take the trash out. Mmm, I'm a finished cash out. Oh, uh, bitch, do not pass out. Yeah, A. How my demons look now that my pocket's full. How my demons look now that you bitches shook, bitch. Yeah, how my demons look now the pocket's full. It's just repetitiveness at that. It's really not that deep. Um, but she did say a couple things that were like, hmm, okay, interesting. So we'll do a chapter from the book and we'll, um, damn, I'm not trying to rhyme. I sound like, how my bitches look. We'll do a chapter from the book. This is Abe off the hook. All right, next segment, please. <laughs> Alright, I think we're going to wrap it up here. This is Leave the World Behind, Chapter 21. In the woods, you had this sense of something you couldn't see no matter how hard you tried. There were bugs, dun-colored toads holding still. Mushrooms in fantastical shapes that seemed accidental. The sweet smell of rot, inexplic inexplicably damp. You felt small. Like one of many things, and the least important too. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, something had happened to them. Maybe something was happening to them. For centuries there was no language to describe the fact that tumors blossomed inside lungs. Beautiful volunteers like flowering plants that take root in unlikely places, not knowing what to call it, did not change it death by drowning as your chest filled with sacks of liquid rose felt eyes on her but then she pretended often that she was not being watched she saw herself at the remove of a cell phone camera she was young and didn't understand that was how everyone saw themselves as the main character of a story Rather than one of the literal billions, our lungs slowly filling with salt water. In the woods, the light was different. The trees interfered with it. 
The trees were alive and felt like Tolkien's mag majestic creatures. The trees were watching, and not impartially. The trees knew what was up. The trees talked amongst themselves. They were sensitive to the seismic reverberations of bombs far distant. Trees miles away where the ocean had begun to breach the land were dying, though it would take years for them to be reduced to albino logs. The trees had all the time the rest of us do not. The mangroves could outsmart it, pull up their roots like Victorian ladies' skirts, sip the salt from the ground so maybe they'd be fine, with all alligators and rats and roaches and snakes. Maybe they'd be better off without us. Sometimes, sometimes, suicide is a relief. That was the right noun for what was happening. The sickness in the ground and in the air and in the water was all clever design. There was a menace in the woods and Rose could feel it. Another child would have called it God. Did it matter if a storm had metastasized into something for which no noun yet existed? Did it matter if the electrical grid broke apart like something built of Lego? Did it matter if Lego would never biodegrade, would outlast Notre Dame, the pyramids of Giza, the pigment dumbed on the walls of Lassux? Did it matter if some nation claimed responsibility for the outage? Did it matter that it was condemned as an act of war? Did it matter if this was the pretext for a retaliation long hoped for? Did it matter that proving who had done what via wires and networks was possibly actually impossible? Did it matter if the asthmatic woman named Deborah died after six hours trapped on the F train stalled beneath the Hudson River? and that the other people on the subway walked past her body and felt nothing in particular. Did it matter that machines meant for supporting life ceased doing that hard work after the failure of backup generators in Miami, in Atlanta, in Charlotte, in Indianapolis? Did it matter if the morbidly obese grandson of the eternal president actually did send a bomb? Or did it matter simply that he could if he wanted to? The children couldn't know that some of this had happened. That in an old age home in a coastal town called Port Victoria, Victory, a Vietnam vet named Peter Miller was floating face down in two feet of water. That Delta had lost a plane traveling between Dallas and Minneapolis during the disruption of the air traffic control system. That a pipeline was spilling crude onto the ground in an unpopulated part of Wyoming. That a major television star had been struck by a car at an intersection on 79th in Amsterdam and died because the ambulances couldn't get anywhere. They couldn't know that the silence that seemed so relaxing in the country seemed so menacing in the city, which was hot, still, and quiet, in a way that made no sense. Nothing matters to children but themselves, or perhaps that is the human condition. Barefoot, bareheaded, barebreasted, the children moved gingerly, feet arching, toes recoiling, branches grazed their skin. And you could not see the marks they made. The illness of the planet had never been a secret. The nature of it all had been never in doubt. And if something had changed, quote unquote, it had. The fact that they didn't yet, it would have no bearing on the matter at all. It was inside them now, whatever it was. The world operated according to logic, but the logic had been evolving for some time, and now they had to reckon with that. 
Whatever they thought they'd understood was not wrong, but it was irrelevant. Archie, look. It came out as a whisper. She'd lowered her voice, assuming respect, as you might inside a holy place. She pointed. A roof, a clearing that became a lawn, a brick house, like the one where they were staying, a pool, a sturdy wood swing set, a house. He wasn't even derisive, just declarative. Archie hadn't been expecting to find anything. Ruth had told them there was nothing out there. But they had gone farther than Ruth ever had. Were curious about the world in the way Ruth was not. This was a satisfactory discovery. Other people. Archie had left his phone charging in his bedroom. He wished he had brought it. Tried to borrow these people's Wi-Fi. Should we go up there? She was thinking of the swing set and that maybe kids had outgrown it. She was thinking that talking to strangers was a matter for the city only. Nah, let's go. Archie turned toward what he believed was the direction from which they had come. He didn't feel like he didn't feel the tick burrowing into his ankle any more than he could of the earth's deliberate daily rotation. He didn't feel anything in the air because it felt unchanged. Dun dun dun! The tick bit into him. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. I knew this was perfect timing. I knew it. They walked, not slowly, but not in a hurry. Time passed differently in the woods. They didn't know how long they'd been gone. They didn't know how or what they intended to do. They didn't know what it felt satisfying, just strolling through the shade of trees, air and sun and bugs and sweat on skin. They didn't know what their father was even it was even then driving past, less than a half mile away, less than a quarter mile, near enough they could run to him, save him. From where they stood, they couldn't even hear the road. And they weren't even thinking about their father or their mother, or anything, anymore. As they walked, Archie and Rose barely spoke, mucking through the leaves, shivering a little. Their bodies knew what their minds did not. Children, and the very old, have this in common. Born, you understand something about the world. That's why toddlers report conversing with ghosts and unnerve their parents. The very old begin to remember it, but can really articulate it, and no one listens to the very old anyways. They were not afraid, the children, not really. They were at peace. A change was upon them. A change was upon all of it. What you called, it didn't matter. Overhead, the leaves shifted and sighed. And there was the sound of Archie and Rose saying something to each other. Something impossible to make out. Something that existed only between the two of them. The private language of youth. And save that there was only a gentle rustle of leaves adjusting their limbs. And the susurrus of unseen insects. Those who settle soon, the way things grow quiet. Before the sudden summer rainstorm, because the bugs knew and would hold their bodies tight to the strippled bark of the trees and wait for whatever is coming. So that was chapter one. That was a Doja Cat deep dive. That was a Lyme disease and the origin of Lyme disease deep dive. Archie got bit by the tick. So, I hope you all enjoyed. Please like, share, and subscribe, and you all have a blessed day. We are as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret society, opposed to secret oaths, opposed to secret proceedings. 
secret for secret proceedings. No official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, could interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to, to, deserve to, to know. know. <laughs> deserve to know.